Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. I gotta say, it's been a pretty boring last couple of weeks here in the crypto space. I've got Bitcoin up here right now trading at 22,600 per coin. And uh, I mean, you know, just taking a date range tool here, uh, last uh, two weeks, give or take, actually about two and a half weeks, uh, we, we really haven't seen too much momentum either way. I have a feeling that this is going to be the trend throughout 2023. And I don't know if it'll even continue to do this kind of a thing. It might do something like this, which is even kind of more frustrating, to be honest. Crypto market still at $1 trillion. So at least we're above that psychological level, that $1 trillion mark. Bitcoin dominance really hasn't budged either. It's uh, holding strong just over 40%, 41.2%. Uh, and just taking a look at the, uh, you know, the top cryptocurrencies over the last 24 hours, we're seeing uh, a little bit of downward movement as of late, but, you know, nothing really to complain about, nothing really to get too excited about either. Um, we just, you know, it's a wait and see game. 2023 is going to be an interesting year. The regulatory clarity in the United States is going to play a large factor in this. And I think investors are just waiting on the sidelines, just kind of waiting and probably are going to make a move once we get some meaningful clarity. This is XRP on the daily right now. XRP is trading at 39.3, 0.393, and uh, still forming this bullish pennant pattern. So at least the pattern is looking poised to move up. Let me just get rid of that. That was uh, what I drew on the chart yesterday. But uh, again, still ranging within that bullish pennant pattern, not too much uh, change in volume either. So guys, we will wait and see. Greg Kidd was recently interviewed on Tony Edwards' show, Thinking Crypto, and uh, I mean, he had an opinion about the SEC and regulation in the United States of America. At the end of the day, you're either going to have to ban it or regulate it, or 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 maybe you can t- you can just ignore it. But um, you know, you, you got to pick one of those three boxes. We know what the SEC is doing. The SEC is just using it as a as excuse to like shake down various companies. They they're not pointing to like well, this is how you do it the right way. Mm. And here's a poster child company that's doing it the right way. They're just taking a notch out of one company after another. And you just, you know, you know that knock is going to come on the door when you're big enough for the, you know, for the collection man to come by and say, you're going to have to pay your fine. I Like like Khashoggi, when he went to visit the Turkish embassy to get his marriage license and he didn't come out, I don't know anyone that's gone in to see the SEC and come out the other side with all their limbs attached mm. well and yet that, there's, there's no there's no playbook for how to do it the right way wow what an analogy greg kid says there's no playbook on how to do it the right way now greg kid for those of you guys who do not know he uh used to work at ripple now he's the ceo of global id and i mean i'm feeling like the sentiment is pretty uh, consistent across the board anybody in cryptocurrency who works in the industry is feeling like the sec is not giving anybody a fair shake. And it's a, it's, it's a shakedown mission. It's, you know, go after the big players. Sure, you're going to go and you're going to pay your fine once we've taken you to court and we found that you've been doing something, in quotes, illegal. And then it's, you know, move on to the next guy. Unfortunately, this is the way it's been going. Mac Attack XRP here posting this. Fox journalist says SEC to announce something big. Did you hear about this? I wonder what it could be. So this was posted yesterday by Eleanor Turret. The United States SEC will make a potentially big announcement tomorrow. Turret disclosed in a tweet. And guys, I do have the tweet up here. So this is the scoop from yesterday evening at about uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. My SEC sources tell me to be prepared for a potentially big announcement tomorrow. Couldn't have something to do with a Kraken settlement following a closed meeting at 2 p.m. So apparently there was a, uh, a meeting with Kraken at 2 p.m. yesterday with the SEC. Could settlement terms have industry ramifications? We will see. Some people down here asking, could it be a Ripple settlement? And uh, talented Mr. Rippler XRP down here saying, the news of a settlement would get to insiders first and the price would go up before any announcement. So no. And I tend to agree. I mean, you know, there's always insiders monitoring these situations. I think we would see one of those unexpected price hikes for XRP if that were the case. So highly doubt that that is likely the case. She mentions the Kraken uh, closed meeting, though, at 2 p.m. Just to give you guys some context here, the U.S. SEC probes Kraken over sales of unregistered securities. So again, the SEC, you know, just kind of picking them off one at a time. They were going after Coinbase. Uh, Now they're going after Kraken, or I mean, this is just another exchange they're going after. So they're probing this major American crypto exchange, Kraken, over its unregistered securities offerings. Uh, The investigation has gotten to an advanced stage, and Kraken will likely settle with the SEC. So this was uh, posted this morning. 
Uh, Bloomberg reported Wednesday, citing people familiar with the matter. According to the report, the regulator is investigating whether the crypto exchange broke securities laws. Uh, so just kind of going over some of this stuff. Settling the regulator could make other crypto firms reach out to the SEC for registration deals, as the agency has always advised. In December, while speaking with Bloomberg, SEC Chair Gary Gensler urged crypto firms to register with the securities watchdog as the runway was getting shorter. So there are quite a few bets that Kraken uh, will settle with the SEC. I will obviously keep you guys posted, uh, and I'm sure uh, we will probably get an announcement from Eleanor Turret as well as soon as uh, something happens. So some interesting news there. I wanted to thank Eleanor for posting that. Now, here's Brooks Entwistle, and I know this was from a few weeks ago. However, the messaging for Ripple and XRP still remaining positive overseas from Sento Sumo Saba here on Twitter. Here's what Brooks Entwistle said in a recent interview with regards to Ripple's unique positioning in not just the world of finance, but the world of fintech. Do you think crypto and blockchain is here to stay in Davos? Yeah, I think it's actually the, one of the perfect places globally to have that conversation because you could literally have both both groups in that proximity and you kind of again we talk about banners of the various crypto firms and the like down the promenade but also you're kind of walking by traditional finance at the same time so we have the ability and we've always been a bridge in the industry between the two that's kind of what we've done from the very beginning and on our ripple network of course we have traditional banks and we have very innovative fintech players and psps and we have to go back and forth and prove the use case to both and so this is a place where we actually have to do that every day. Uh, we're not spinning and chasing you know, ideas that there's really no audience for uh, or things that people understand why they're actually relevant to their day-to-day -day business. That's what we're here to do. We just gotta get right to the points uh, and get people alongside us to keep moving. So Ripple staying focused and uh, you know they are in a great position, a superior fintech, rubbing elbows with the important players in finance. Well, I mean, I think Ripple's already uh, kind of solidified their reputation by now. But I mean, all this to say, you know, they're so far removed from all this crypto noise that we're seeing in the United States. Uh, you know, sell it. I mean, I know they're in a they're in a lawsuit with the SEC, sure. But, you know, they're so far ahead. They're so focused on so many other things, so many other aspects of cryptocurrency and uh, blockchain technology, DLT technology, that is actually solving real world problems that I think, you know, this, this SEC lawsuit to them is not really, you know, a, really a big deal. And it, it never really seemed to be a big deal, even when Brad Garlinghouse announced that Ripple was being sued way back in December of 2020. They, you know, took it with a grain of salt. They realized it was coming. They realized it was inevitable. Uh, you know, just kind of a page out of the SEC's playbook. They're taking them on. They've got really good lawyers fighting the case. And so, you know, just another step in the process of real world adoption of XRP. So a perspective here from Brooks Entwistle. Not only that, guys, we got this from Michael Branch. David Schwartz came out and gave his opinion on XRP and gave a really good example of what uh, a commodity would be versus a security. And I think when David boils it down, it's really kind of simple. Here's what it says, in an attempt to provide some clarity as the SEC seems chaotic over which digital token constitutes a security or commodity in the crypto industry, David Schwartz pinpointed a symbol metric that creates the perfect distinction. Now get this guys, according to the Ripple CTO, a token that could be re uh, regarded as a security is one that gives holders rights. On the other hand, digital tokens that can be categorized as commodities are those that give holders abilities. So that's an interesting distinction that we, uh, I don't think we've really kind of heard. Uh, he wrote, there's a very simple way to tell if something's a security or a commodity. If it gives you rights, it's a security. If it gives you abilities, it's a commodity. Uh, to further buttress this point, uh, and also answer a question from a user that governance tokens give holders the ability uh, and the right to vote, Schwartz made an illustration using oranges and IBM stocks. He noted, I guess somewhat, if you own an orange, you have the legal right to eat that orange, but it's not a contractual right to have anyone else do anything. It's a purely negative right. Furthermore, he stated, say you buy IBM stock at a broker, uh, you now have a legal right to participate in IBM's governance, but you don't have any ability to participate. IBM is legally obligated to ensure you that you have the ability to participate by notifying you and counting your votes. When you hold a governance token, nobody has given you any legal right to vote. They've just given you the technical ability to vote. So, uh, very, you know, uh, interesting distinctions here. And, you know, if we're parsing it apart, because at the end of the day, U.S. retail investors, institutional investors too, for that matter, and the crypto industry as a whole needs to really drill down and understand what the definition is so that there's comfort in now investing in crypto. Uh, it goes on to say, and this right and ability distinction is of major legal significance. Securities give rights, commodities 
give abilities. So what would XRP fall under? Obviously, it does give the holders abilities to, uh, you know, utilize it in the way that it was meant to be utilized, holding it, uh, you know, for a purpose to perform actions on the XRP ledger, so on and so forth. So an interesting distinction here from David Schwartz. And, uh, you know, I, I bet you if you just took this to court, the SEC really would have a hard time deflating this argument. So some great insight here from David Schwartz. Wanted to thank Michael for posting that. So are the rumors true? I know many of you guys have probably seen this today. Brian Armstrong did post this. We're hearing rumors that the SEC would like to get rid of crypto staking in the United States for retail customers. Note that, guys, for retail customers specifically. I hope that's not the case, as I believe it would be a terrible path for the U.S. if that was allowed to happen. He continues by saying, staking is a really important innovation in crypto. It allows users to participate directly in running open crypto networks. Staking brings many positive improvements to the space, including scalability, increased security, and reduced carbon footprints. Uh, staking is not uh, security. It's a good prime. Uh, here's a good primer here. So he posts this article here. We need to make sure that new technologies are encouraged to grow in the U.S. and not stifled by lack of clear rules. Uh, when it comes to financial services and Web3, it's a matter of national security that these capabilities be built out in the United States. Regulation by enforcement does not work. So going back to that point that the SEC uh, you know, wants to kind of pursue, it encourages companies to operate offshore, which is what happened with FTX. Hopefully we can all work together to publish clear rules for the industry and come up with sensible solutions that protect consumers while preserving innovation and national security interests in the United States. And uh, Dario Bitcoin down here asking Charles Hoskinson his thoughts. Ethereum staking is problematic, says Hoskinson. Uh, temporarily giving up your assets to someone else to have them get a return looks a lot like a regulated product. Slashing in bonds, uh, not so good. Non-custodial liquid staking, on the other hand, is like the mining pools we've been used to for the last 13 years. Uh, the crypto meme guy down here saying agreed. Now, what about our songbird and flare tokens, Brian Armstrong? Uh, so on and so forth. So an interesting thread here. Some people uh, like Ben Armstrong also responding. Absolutely. The SEC loses its power over crypto. And obviously, this is exactly what the SEC doesn't want. So they're trying to control the narrative. They're trying to control how crypto is going to be utilized in the U.S. Just yesterday, I did a video discussing government strategy to now control the choke points, the on ramps, the off ramps. Again, guys, a warning, it's probably a good idea to have many different cryptocurrency exchanges open, many accounts on different cryptocurrency exchanges, I mean. So, um, you know, I do have a BitTrue link, for example, in the description of the video. You can sign up for one using my affiliate. You can use it if you want. You don't even have to use BitTrue. All I'm saying is that having more available options to you, never a bad thing. So if you guys didn't catch that video, I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner. Um, and Andrew here at AP Abacus posted this in relation to Brian Armstrong's points. The Fed and the Office of the Controller of the Currency, or the OCC, are in the midst of a massive crypto debanking operation. So going along those lines of Project Choke Point, what is going on is draconian and aimed to kill crypto. Fed and the OCC are going after Morgan Stanley, Custodia Bank, and even states uh, that are crypto friendly like Wyoming. So, you know, the crypto industry has worked really hard to move along in a piecemeal fashion so that cryptocurrency can be more or less, uh, you know, adopted in the United States. You know, it starts in certain states like Wyoming, uh, you know, kind of moving piecemeal. But the government clearly doesn't want this. Andrew down here saying more sources, uh, Paxo Global and others were told by the OCC to either withdraw their banking charter applications or they would be denied by Friday. So does that sound to you like we're moving in the right direction? VCs are starting to become very, very concerned that their crypto portfolio companies are being debanked en masse. And then down here, he says uh, the OCC is set to produce a paper shortly that is said to be so draconian that a sizable portion of OCC employees may depart. So I don't know that none of this is confirmed, by the way. This is just coming from some sources here that uh, Andrew at uh, AP underscore Abacus here on Twitter has posted. He continues on by saying, Coinbase has been told to wind down crypto staking or face fines and other more debilitating actions. Now, at no point here was Brian Armstrong or did Brian Armstrong say that Coinbase was directly affected. He just posted his uh, his thoughts on uh, the SEC's position to stop staking. Uh, this goes on to say, this is a coordinated multi-agency action process. Uh, reminder that Gemini and Kraken are also under SEC investigation and face similar ultimatums. So guys, this is all kind of, you know, making sense, gelling together. Uh, the probe with Kraken, you know, a few weeks ago we heard about Gemini. Almost sounds like a concerted effort. Uh, consider for a moment if the Fed, OCC, the SEC, and other agencies are willing to lock horns with multiple states. And Morgan Stanley, the world's fifth largest 
investment bank. Why would they hesitate to apply the same type of choke point pressure to Coinbase? Also things to consider, outside influences running the show because we've also got, you know, similar types of uh, ideas floating around in other parts of the world like Dubai. And even though the Middle East to some degree has uh, rules and regulations in place uh, for, you know, the utilization of Ripple and XRP, for example, here they're standing, Dubai forbids operation with Monero, Zcash, and other privacy coins. So it sounds as though in the US, we're not there yet for crypto companies like Ripple and XRP. I think the prediction though, that is gonna come very soon. And I think that that is very likely. But it's all these other aspects revolving around cryptocurrency that the U.S. government feels that they need to focus on. So Dubai's Virtual Asset Regulatory Authority prohibited all activities involving privacy coins such as Monero and Zcash. The regulator has also enforced certain rules on the domestic cryptocurrency sector to turn the city into an international hub for virtual assets. So on the one hand, they want to turn uh, the city into an international hub for virtual assets. So obviously very crypto friendly. And obviously, right, they have a framework on how they want that to be done. But on the other hand, Monero, Zcash, uh, 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 not using it in our jurisdiction. According to a recently released document, operations with anonymity enhancing digital assets like XMR and ZEC are now forbidden in the financial heart of the United Arab Emirates. And I mean, of course, this has to do with anti-money laundering rules. The, uh, the most fundamental principles include anti-money laundering obligations, marketing protocols, prevention of insider trading, and observing whether an asset class is used in criminal activities. So um, this is kind of the most obvious reason why you would want to uh, why you would want to abolish stable coins. Um, it doesn't make for an entirely free society, but I understand why government would not want us using privacy coins. And so, you know, I think in the future, in the near future too, we're going to see a really divided and fractured crypto industry. The coins that solve problems, the coins that can transfer value, the coins that, and especially the coins that, uh, you know, global elites, the World Economic Forum, the World Bank, the IMF, the coins that those guys view as positive for their world of finance, those are obviously going to get clarity. And this is why WEF coins, that's why I'm focused on WEF coins, the Algorands, the XRPs, the XLMs, right? But there's a lot of other cryptocurrencies out there that uh, I would be very, very worried about investing in, especially at this juncture, at this moment in time in the history of cryptocurrency. So uh, some interesting insight here with regards to that Brian Armstrong thread. Wanted to thank him and uh, obviously Andrew here also for uh, giving his insight on this. Bill Morgan uh, touching on this as well. Do you really think a great democracy such as the US will be as draconian towards crypto as China? So a bit of an opposing view here. It is just vested interests, futility, trying to hold back what is challenging them. Uh, responding to a library's tweet from yesterday, it's increasingly obvious that there is a coordinated effort among government agencies to destroy cryptocurrency in the United States. And Anders brings up a good point. Well, the US is built on giving privileges to rich people from the justice system to accredited investor laws to schools to health. So I don't see why they would allow regular people gaining equal access to financial services as the rich. That sounds anti-American to me. Darren Carlson down here saying, but the forces behind this are so immense. They keep fighting to keep control over the financial industry. People are fighting the good fight though, to have the industry accept positive change using blockchain and cryptocurrencies. So it's a bit of a tug and war, I gotta say. The U.S. obviously doesn't want to be left behind. Government sees the writing is on the wall, realize the U.S. dollar is essentially under attack. Uh, the BRICS nation's already working on their, uh, you know, their own version of SWIFT uh, and also working to create a different uh, reserve currency, something that uh, could be backed by gold, as per what Russia was suggesting, or something else, other commodities. So, you know, we're living in a very, very different time, guys. This all reminds me of the bearable guy, one, two, three Christmas scene. This coming from Ripples in Wales, here on Twitter. So think of this for a second, getting rid of crypto staking. He's bringing up the Brian Armstrong tweet here uh, that is making the rounds that's been getting a lot of impressions, a lot of social engagement. Does that not remind you of what Bearable Guy posted a few years ago now? And this particular part of this Christmas riddle, the recycling of coins. And I mean, at that time, we did not assume that it was the recycling of coins so much as we thought, uh, you know, maybe white papers, recycling different white papers to create uh, cryptos that were basically one in the same. Now taking a look at this, could it have meant staking and creating brand new coins, more value, more wealth out of old coins? And when we take a look at this arm here, it looks like a banker's arm, uh, somebody in a suit, obviously. Could it be that bearable guy was pointing to the fact that the banks, the financial institutions, 
uh, the people with money would only be the ones, or at least are trying to be the only ones, to have control over who gets rich on cryptocurrencies. It's all making sense now. Uh, and I mean, even if Bearable Guy wasn't uh, relating to this specific topic of the SEC trying to get rid of staking, it's bigger picture stuff. Bearable Guy obviously has been on track with a lot of this stuff over the last several years. So is staking, crypto staking. Another example of how the US government trying to screw retail investors. That's why guys, if 99% of these coins go to zero, make sure you're holding the ones that aren't going to go to zero. That's just my opinion, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.